Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the week seven edition of Lambs Plays and Fades. We'll start off as we always do with the quarterback that we like this week, Marcus Mariota. Mariota is going on the road to play the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns are in the bottom five in DVOA against the pass this year. Teams are having trouble running against the Cleveland Browns, so the way to beat them is through the air. And I think Mariota is going to have a big game this week. You might get him at low ownership because the Q might scare people off because he's still battling some hamstring issues, but he has a high floor because of the rushing upside. Play Mariota this week. Next up, the running back that I like this week, and if you've been following a trend, we've been pretty spot on on playing guys when they're at their lowest salary. This running back is at the lowest he'll be all season. LaShawn McCoy. The Bills are at home as a three-point favorite against the Tampa Bay Bucks, and the Bucks just gave up 134 plus yards to old man Peterson. McCoy is getting 72% of the workload in the backfield for the Buffalo Bills. Charles Clay is still out. Jordan Matthews is coming back, but he's hobbled, and nobody really trusts Zay Jones. But the only thing is, is McCoy hasn't scored a touchdown yet this year. I think it's coming, and I think it's coming this week. Next up, the wide receiver position, and I've been getting some good feedback from you guys. Thank you very much for that. And a lot of you have been asking to give more than one wide receiver every week. Most of the sites in DFS ask you to play three receivers. So I'm gonna start giving you three receivers that I like each week. First up, AJ Green. AJ Green, as an underdog going into Pittsburgh, one of the better wide receivers on the road. Some people might get scared off by Joe Hayden, but even going back to his time with the Cleveland Browns, AJ Green used to eat him up. Next up is another wide receiver I like this week, Devontae Adams. I know Aaron Rodgers is out for the rest of the year, but Devontae Adams last week got 10 targets with Brett Hundley. Coming out of college, Brett Hundley was able to chuck the ball downfield. It was the intermediate to short that he struggled with. And it seems like Adams and Hundley kind of have a good rapport together. I think everybody's going to be scared off the Green Bay Packer wide receivers because of no Rodgers. But if you want to take down a tournament, I think Adams might be the guy for you. Next up is the other wide receiver that I like this week, Demarius Thomas. Demarius Thomas is getting 11 targets a game this year. His teammate Emmanuel Sanders is also up there. No other team in the NFL funnels more passes to two particular players than the Denver Broncos, and Sanders is out this week. Casey Hayward might be a tough matchup for Demarius Thomas, but he's already given up two touchdowns this year. In a game where I think Demarius Thomas might see 10 targets at the very least, might as well take a flyer on him at 7,100 on FanDuel. Next up, we got the tight end position, and this week, my boy, George Kittle. You know who else's boy George Kittle is? C.J. Beathard, former teammates together in college at Iowa. When C.J. Beathard checked into the game last week, Kittle got six targets. What does everyone always say about the QB and tight end relationship? It's like pacifiers for a baby. Kittle is 4,800 on FanDuel. The minimum for any player is 4,500. You're telling me I might get eight targets from a tight end at 4,800? Sign me up. Last but not least, the defense I like this week and I don't even understand the price on this one. The Minnesota Vikings, 4,700 at home where they play better against Joe Flacco and the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, look, come on. Really? Really? I'm playing the Vikings, locking them in right away. Take all the points, get all the money. Let's move on over to the fade section. The quarterback that I'm fading this week, Russell Wilson. Historically, a quarterback that does better at home. Now they got to travel East Coast, though they are playing at 425 against the New York Giants. The Giants defense played well last week in Denver, and I think that that's going to carry over. But I still don't trust Russell. I still don't trust what... I chill don't... <laughs> I'm chilled though. I still don't trust Russell Wilson enough to put him in my lineup this week. Wilson this week is 8100 $100 more I could get Marcus Mariota. Give me that. Next up, the running back that I'm going to fade this week. CJ, what a dud last week, Anderson. For the record, the guys that you see here are in my lineups. So when they dud and shit the bed, <laughs> bedtime for me. Let's get back into CJ Anderson. Last week in a dreamy matchup at home as a big favorite against the New York Giants. Egg. Now there are rumblings out of Denver that Jamal Charles is going to get more of a workload. Devontae Booker checked into the game last week for the first time all year. And CJ Anderson, who knows what's going on over there. On FanDuel, he's 7,100. Also priced with Mark Ingram. Do I need to say more? Play Mark Ingram over CJ Anderson if that's the case. Moving on over to the wide receiver I dislike this week. And I know it's going to seem crazy. It always is when he's in a fade section. Antonio, business is booming. Hopefully not this week, Brown. Antonio Brown and the Pittsburgh Steelers are at home against the Cincinnati Bengals this week. If you take the last five meetings that Antonio Brown has had against the Cincinnati Bengals, he's averaging 57.5 yards per game. Let's just say he averages that this week and he scores a touchdown. On FanDuel, that's about 13 points. At 9,300, tuck yourself in. If you're paying 9,300 for a guy in a big tournament to take it down, you need close to 25 points at the minimum. If I'm gonna pay up for a guy as expensive as Antonio Brown, 
Look no further than the running back in Pittsburgh, Le'Veon Bell. I think the price is getting a little too ridiculous for Antonio. And in a matchup that he struggled with in the past, I'm going to just stay away. Next up, the tight end I'm fading this week, Evan Ingram. Last week, Ingram was in a great spot against the Broncos, and he got himself into the end zone. This week, Seattle's coming into New York. It's bam, bam, cam time. Cam Chancellor is one of the best defenders at guarding the tight end, and I think it's a tough task for the first round pick for the New York Giants. Seattle is a veteran defense, and what do they know? They know how to stop your best weapon, and right now, it's Evan Ingram. I think they're going to take Evan Ingram out the game, and this could be one of those games where we think about benching Eli Manning. Sorry, bud. Last but not least, the defense that I'm facing this week, the Los Angeles Rams. Basically, this game is in London, if you don't know. The start time is a little weird. It's a 1 o'clock start Eastern time, 10 a.m. Pacific time. Usually, those games start at 9.30 in the morning in the East. That's why a lot of you might not be aware that it's a London game. But I'm staying away because too much nonsense happens in London. Do you know who scored three touchdowns in London this year? Mercedes Lewis. Must be 2007 again. There you have it, guys. Plays and Fades, Week 7 edition. If you like what you're hearing, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. If you want to contact me, LamVM10 on Twitter. And if you want to hear more DFS, Degeneration Bets is the name of the podcast. DFS Fridays, every Friday, coming at you. And if you're not down with that, you know the rest.